Okay. Well, that is putting in all the physical components of the system. We have one more thing we need to do before we can start closing this up. And as you can see, that is a nice mess of cables. Um, some of this stuff like this is kind of pop up. This one isn't too bad. It doesn't bother me. Um, this we really can't do anything about. Uh, this here, I don't like them sitting on top of motherboard components, especially close to the fan. Um, so we need to go through and start cleaning up our wiring mess. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is this here. Kind of move that out of the way. And generally these cables will stay in place. Some cables like this here, you have this extra slack in it. There isn't really anything you can do about it. Uh, generally I kind of ball the cables a little bit. Kind of like this here, how it's all like that. And what I'm going to do with this case here is I'm going to put a zip tie around the main connector and this guy here to make sure it stays up out of the way. It's got such rigidity to the main connector that it's going to keep it there. Um, same thing with some of these other guys here. Um, I'm probably going to uh, zip tie uh, where was it? this bundle here. I'm going to grab them together zip tie them along with that one cable I just showed you up there at the top and that'll keep it in place and uh, then we're going to go ahead and connect up the extra fan connector down there and there you go as you can see that is a bit better we don't have a huge amount of wires just all kind of bobble mobbled and hanging about they're all kind of zip tied together so they're nice and kind of out of the way we don't have them dangling all down here one thing I wanted to note before I flipped it up uh, when I do zip ties I keep them with a little bit of slack in them uh, as you can see it kind of moves about just a little bit uh, the reason for this is let's say this power supply ever goes bad or um, even better yet uh, like with this bundle up here we made let's say we want to install a second CD drive at some point well getting in here to safely cut your zip tie without damaging the cables can be a little bit messy if you don't give it just a little bit of slack so you can get a pair of scissors in there and snip it otherwise you're taking a knife you're kind of having to jam it in there hoping you don't you know shred some of the sheathing or um, covering of these wires so you can start wiggling back and forth and cut it you could jab a cable call a short down the road something like that so whenever I do zip ties I give lots of slack um, so something can actually get behind them and cut them off. Um, I usually try and use scissors wherever possible to cut, but um, nowadays, the way people use these things and how they're made, uh, it's not going to get in there too easily. You know what I mean? So, even with all the slack I put in there, it's going to be a little bit hard. So, the whole point of the zip ties is basically keep the cables from dangling into something that they shouldn't be. This is probably the easiest thing to do on the whole thing and that is to attach the front fan to the extra connector. This guy is that same cable we had going to the hard drive over here. You're probably not going to be able to see it but there's a little bit of it uh, that we left that little bit of slack here so we can go through, hook it up and when it's done, we're just going to basically tuck it to the side here because it's really not going to do much difference with the airflow, and that's as much slack as we're going to get. So that's it for that part, and then we're going to close it up. Okay, I've got my crazy little superstition about not closing up a system before powering it on because usually when you do, <laughs> there's something wrong. So I haven't put either of the side panels on, but that's pretty simple for you to put that on if you followed everything so far and you can't get that on you're in pretty big trouble I did put the front panel on make sure you know our CD drive is nice and lined up and let's go ahead flip our back power to on and we can hit our front we got our power LED and I think I just saw our hard drive LED blink for a second and over on our screen that was our BIOS welcome flash screen. 
And we got a message here saying, please enter setup to recover BIOS settings. F1 to run setup to run defaults and continue. Press F2. Well, let's go ahead and get into the BIOS, but first let's check. Uh, as you can see there, I'm kind of very blurry because I'm getting a little too close. But it tells us basically we have 4 gigs of RAM in this thing. It sees um, DDR2, 800 megahertz in ungaged mode, which is fancy talk for it's running in dual channel. It sees our hard drive, and it sees our uh, CD, DVD, reader, writer, yada, yada, yada. So let's go into our settings. We see our BIOS date and time is correct. We do not have a floppy drive, so we set that to disabled. Um, we do speak English, so language is English. We don't have any IDE devices hooked up. If you did, you would see them listed there. And if you did hook them up and you don't see them listed, check your cables, check your power. Um, we got our SATA drive showing up. Storage configuration. Um, in previous videos I've done for installing Windows XP, I've mentioned that you want to make sure um, that you're running in a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, a non-RAID mode because sometimes um, XP will not recognize the um, RAID controller and you will not be able to do it. So we're setting to AHCI instead of RAID, because we're not doing RAID on this. Uh, we see our processors correctly reported. We got 3 gigahertz. Uh, it's a Phenom 2 945, so that means that's most likely working partially correct. If you want to go through and do um, overclocking, that's all in here. I'll make a separate video on that in a few seconds. Um, we got CPU configuration, yada, yada, yada. Cool and quiet mode, we want enabled. Um, helps keep it running nice and smooth. And um, chipset options, Northbridge, yeah, 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 more memory configuration stuff. Um, we don't have any ECC memory in this, so we're not going to fool around with that. And that's pretty much the rest of it. Um, Alright, the last couple things we're going to check in the BIOS here. Uh, we want to go into tools. We want to go ahead and turn off the express gate. I've already done this. Uh, the camera ran out of juice, so I went ahead and just kind of finished up. But I want to show you what I did. Just go into express gate. Do disabled. Um, it's kind of um, a feature if you want to go through and set your system up to automatically boot to like a media partition or something like that. I haven't really fooled around with it and don't care to. And uh, boot device priority. Uh, we want to go through, make sure our CD drive is going to be our first boot device. Second is going to be our um, hard drive. That's a SATA um, Seagate drive you're seeing there. And then the third boot device um, is normally like the removable device. I go ahead and disable that because the removable device can be any USB device you plug into it, including printers. So sometimes your system may sit there and sit for a long time. Uh, maybe it's trying to boot off your printer. And then there's some other options in here if you want to go through and disable the uh, full screen logo or go through and do a more diagnostic type of boot that checks more of the hardware. You can change those settings here. And last thing. Before you go through and actually start up uh, Windows and all that stuff, go ahead and check your hardware monitor. Make sure that your um, fan speeds are being reported correctly. Um, in this case, our power supply did not have a uh, power, or I should say power voltage, uh, fan sensor on it, so we don't have the other one hooked up. But uh, everything seems to be showing up fine. Uh, the system's actually been on for quite a while, that's why you see the uh, temperature uh, as high as it is at the moment. But uh, that's it as far the bi as the BIOS settings. Uh, you can go ahead, put your CD 
your Windows CD in the system, start it up and start your Windows installation. Uh, have an entire set of videos already dedicated to Windows 7. I'll just put them as a uh, response to this. And that's it. And that's how you can go through, build your own computer, step by step, installing everything in it. And uh, if you want to go through, build this system, uh, like I said, there's going to be a parts list out on the website. You're welcome to go through and uh, go ahead and purchase the exact same parts that were used in this system build. And uh, if you got any questions, feel free to post them on the related video. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.